All right, we are now recording. Welcome, everyone, to the first, maybe only, Thursday night here, beginning on Pasha's Parations. This Shabbos, we have the privilege of beginning the Torah once again. It's an awesome privilege because, first of all, it only comes once a year, and secondly, it demonstrates the eternity of Pla Yisrael. Despite the fact that we left Mitzrayim 3,330 some years ago. Today, we're still going over the Torah and learning it anew and practicing the study of Chumash in a way that binds us to the eternity of the Jewish people year after year. It's interesting that we finish the Parsha of Mizos Abracha which is the only parsha in all the Torah that's not read on Shabbos. The Zos HaBrocha is never read on Shabbos, always mm -hmm. during the week, because Simcha's Torah never takes place on Shabbos. But immediately, we start Bereshus on that same day. And we begin with the study of Bereshus Bar Elokim, Es HaShemayim, V'Es HaOretz. Our Rabbi Vigna Miller, Zichman HaLevrocha, used to point out that the first three words in the Torah are all the information anyone really needs. Because once you have that information, so to speak, in your pocket, and once you know Bereshit, at the beginning of time, whenever Hashem created time, or Elohim, God created the world, the most important information any of us ever needs is the information that Hashem created the world. Once we know that Hashem created the world, we now can do everything. It gives us total free will because he used his free will to create the world. And he said about the human being that he's creating the human being, B'Tselem Elohim, in the image of God. We are created in God's image. Now, what does that mean? All the Mepharshim is, everyone is, and the Gemara is. What does it mean when it says that we were created in God's image? After all, ain't lo de mus ha guf, the ain't no guf. He doesn't have a likeness of a human body. He's not a body. He's a spirit. So what does it mean when it says that we were created in Hashem's image? Says the Gemara, and Rashi quotes it in the Chumash, not here, but in other places. Mahu Rachum, just like Hashem is merciful, He's merciful and forgives sin, even the sin of the golden calf, after which it says, Hashem, Hashem, Kel Rachum, Bechanun, just like God is merciful, Bechanun, and gracious, just like Hashem is merciful and gracious, Af Atah. You should be. We have to mute uh, because uh, people are not aware that they're supposed to. So we're going to mute everybody right now. I'm sorry in the middle of this. You have to mute everybody. So if you want to talk from this point on, when I have question time, you'll have to unmute yourself. Okay. So just like Hashem is Racham and merciful, Afato Tehei Racham. So you have to be merciful, and you have to be chanun. You have to be gracious. Graciousness is such a wonderful commodity to have. It's such a wonderful piece of our character and humanity. It's a midah tova to be gracious and merciful. And I mention all this because I want you to know that the hamik dover, the nitziv, has a psicha to say reverberations. You know, Rashi, at the beginning, as my son-in-law recently pointed out in a video he made for the OU and Eretz Israel, the Shmuel Aaron Shua Shlita, he said, you know, we all know the first Rashi. We all know that Rashi. You know, the Rashi asks the question, the Torah, after all, is a book of laws. It's a, it's a, it's a book of mitzvot. In fact, the very first mitzvah is HaChodesh HaZelochem, which means this renewal is for you the first of all renewals. We can renew ourselves just as we're renewing safe reparations. 
Why didn't the Torah start with the first mitzvah? So Rashi gives a very interesting answer. Rashi says, I want you to understand something, says Hashem. It's not just that I'm giving a safer of mitzvahs. I'm giving a safer which is going to be the backbone of the Jewish people so that they can fulfill Hashem's commands, my commands, says Hashem, in the land of Israel. And that they are being given the land of Israel by the creator of the world. Eretz Israel is ours by virtue of the fact that Hashem created us and the whole world. And he chooses to give the land, the most precious land on earth, the land that it says about whom it says, Ene Hashem Elokecha Ba May Reshis Shana Ad Akhmis Shana, the land in which the eye of God is on it from the beginning of the year till the end of the year and to end of all years. Hashem is always watching out for Eretz Israel. And he says, I'm giving it to the one I want to give it to. And now Rashi says an interesting thing. He says that if the nations of the world want to complain and say it's ours and the Jews are robbers, you hear? They're saying you rob the land from others. You just bring in this book and you show it to them where it says that I created it, says Hashem, and I give it to the people I want. And it says in the book, at the beginning, when the Avram Avinu comes along, to your seed, I'm going to give this land. And the Gemara even goes so far as to say that the, that the Yishma'el, that the Yishma'elim are going to come along and say that, well, Yishma'el is also Zaracha. So the Pasuk says, no, keep the Yitzchak in In Yitzchak is your seed. So I'm giving you the Yitzchak. Along comes Esau. And Esau says, wait a minute. We're from Yitzchak too. So the Pasuk says, Ki bi Yitzchak. In Yitzchak, below kol Yitzchak. Not all of Yitzchak. Only one of the two sons of Yitzchak. Yaakov. And Yaakov is called Lezaracha. Ki bi Yitzchak yikare lecha and the Yozarachok Ka'afar Ha'oretz, who for the Yom of a came up, it's a phone of a Negba, and that's Yaakov. Yaakov is Zarachok. So I, says Hashem, created the world, and I'm giving it to the one I want. So now, Rabosai, isn't this a beautiful thing? Imagine the United Nations come to the Jewish people and they say, What right do you have to this land? So, what, are, what, are, what usually the diplomats get up and say, Well, after all, there's only one land. That's belong, that the Jews have, and uh, after the Holocaust, we deserve it, and we went through so many vicissitudes over all of history. After all, you have so many Arab nations, Christian nations. Why don't you give this little piece of land to the Jewish people? So they're arguing based on 1948, 1917's Balfour Declaration, the League of Nations statements, and so on and so forth. Forget it. Take the Chumash, go to the United Nations, say, Beresh is borrowed with him, and I'll read you the Rashi, and then tell it to them, aren't all the people in the United Nations going to stand up and they're going to clap and say, yes, it belongs to the Jews. Rashi said so. It doesn't make sense. Who is Rashi talking to when he says, I want you to know that the land belongs to you? Who's Rashi talking to? He's talking to us. We, the Jewish people, have to know that the land of Israel is ours by virtue of the fact that Hashem gave it to us. They're not going to listen to us. I mean, Ultimately, they may, because after all, it says, on, one, on that day, his name will be one. Yeah. Then maybe they'll listen. But you know who has to know this information? You know who has to have this information? You and I and every one of us have to have this information. So that is Rashi's first comment in the Torah. I created them. I created the world, I'm giving the land of Israel. But I want you to know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this discussion, that the Hamik Dovar, the Nitziv, the Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, Zechayin Levracha, 
who wrote the Hamik Dover has an introduction in the Psyche. I want to read you just a few words of this Psyche. He starts by telling us that if you take a look at the Gemara in Avodah Zarah and Psukim in Yehoshua and in Shmuel, you're going to see an interesting thing. Beratius has another name. You know what the name of Beratius is? Sefer Hayashar, the book of straightness, the book of being a Yashar, someone who goes beyond just a tzaddik, someone who is straight, all the way, honest, above board. He's Yashar. And the book of Beratius is called Sefer Hayashar. And I'm going to tell you why, says the Hamlet Dover. Because if you look, he brings down historical fact. He says, you know, in the time of the second base Hamigdash, people were filled with Sitkus. People were filled with righteousness. They were very observant. They were observant looking Jews. They dressed like Jews. They davened like Jews. They kept Shabbos like Jews. But the Hamid Dover says, you know what the problem was? The problem was that even though they were no egg, even though they were no egg like Sadiqim, says the Hamid Dover, Nevertheless, Biyiras Hashem, they were tzaddikim. However, because Ben Adam Lachaveiro, they were lacking in their observance. Al Yedeze, Bo'ul Yedeshvichas Domim. They came to the level where there was a civil war amongst the Jewish people. Blood was spilled. Kedorah Loga, like in the generations of the confusion when they built the Tower of Bovel. And they came to the level of Kol Horo Sheba Olam. They did all manner of evil. Ad Shechorav Habayis. Until the base of Melissa was destroyed. Because there was a lack of Yashar. There was a lack of straightness a lack of yashrus. There was something missing. What's greater, the tzaddik or the yashar? Who is greater? Not the tzaddik. The yashar is greater. And I want to take you to a pasuk in Tehillim, Tzaddik Zion, which we say every single Friday night. And in fact, we don't only say it every single Friday night, but do you know when we open up the service of Yom Kippur, this past Yom Kippur just two weeks ago, when I stood on the beam and had the privilege of holding the Sefer Torah and beginning before Kol Nidre, and I walked off the beamer singing, O Zodu Allah Tzadik, Uli Yishrei Leif Simcha. What does that mean? O there was a light, Zaru al-Tzadik, that's planted for the righteous one. But for the straight of heart, Simcha. They go beyond just light. They have Simcha. Now that is the simple interpretation of that Pusik. And that's the way we always read it. Or Zaru al-Tzadik, the light is planted for the righteous. And for the straight of heart, simcha. So the greater one, the one who has simcha, you may have light in your life, but you're missing simcha, it's not so good. But the one who's yashar not only has light, but he has simcha. You want simcha, you gotta be yashar. You gotta be straight. You gotta play by the rules, as they say. You can't have shenanigans because the Hamid Dover pointed out that gracious is called Sefer HaYashar, because Avraham was Yashar. He goes so far as to say, Avraham prayed for the people of Sodom 
Did he like the people of Sodom? Did Avram think highly of the people of Sodom? Did he love the people of Sodom? Yes, he did. You know why? Because they were human beings. They were wayward. They were wicked. They were wrong. But he didn't hate them. He prayed for them. He prayed that Hashem should save the people of Sodom. That's Yashar. That is really Yashrus. Yosef Atzadik, when he was in Egypt, whom did he save? He didn't just save himself. He saved the whole world. The whole world. Avram went around digging wells for other people so they would have what to drink in the desert. He was Yashar. So the Yisrael Lev Simcha, and now I want to give you an interpretation of these particular words that takes it out of the usual context and explains it according to the brilliant writings of Rav Shamshim of Foyle Hirsch, who I so often quote. And Rav Hirsch says, take a look at this pasuk and put the accent on the proper syllable, you know, on the right syllable. Put it straight. Read the Pasuk in the Tehillim. And you're amazed at what the Trap says to do. And it says as follows. Listen carefully. Or Zorua. The light that's planted is Lat Sadiq for the righteous. He doesn't say that light is planted for the righteous. He says the light that is planted by the righteous is for the righteous. And for those who are straight of heart and plant straightness of heart, they are going to have simcha. So the way you have to read this pasuk is a little different than the way we normally think. We would think you have to read it, light is planted for the tzaddik. Oh no, says our friends. Oh, zarua. The light that is planted by the tzaddik is la tzaddik. It's for the righteous. Maybe, maybe, maybe here in this world, the righteous doesn't see that light yet. It's planted for the righteous. It's going to be given to the righteous eventually. But he plans. And that, because he did not demand the result of it in this world, and he did not usurp the straightness that a Jew is supposed to have, therefore it's planted and he will get it eventually. But Le Yisrael Lev, to those who are straight of heart, and don't mix the mistake of being righteous to God and non-righteous to humanity. They're only going to get the righteousness he planted in this world, perhaps, between him and God, and Hashem will take care of the rest. But the Yisrael Leiv, when it comes to those who are right of heart, if you do the right thing and treat other human beings and act in accordance with that which will bring honor to Hashem and honor to you, honor to your fellow man, Someone who is tov la Hashem, tov la brios, and tov to himself. We just learned the other day the three unique points of what is considered the proper midos to have, as it says in the Daf Yomi. One is the midah of tov la Hashem. The other midah is the midah of tov la chaveiro. And the third midah is tov la atzmo. One has to be filled with all three, and then you're a yashar. And therefore, we say like this. We in this world, when we do the right thing, we may think to ourselves, oh, look at all this goodness that I'm doing. Look at all the right things I'm doing. Why don't I get reward? Why don't I see the fulfillment? The Jewish people have suffered so long. We've gone through so much. Do we have to go through this anymore? How long? How much longer? When is Mashiach going to come? Why doesn't he come already? 
Why isn't he here? Look at this pandemic we're going through. Look at the difficulties the Jewish people have beset by all corners. Even though, as I said in the introduction the other day to this terrible list of demands that we have to follow because Dina de Malchus Dina, I don't believe it's predicated by anti-Semitism, but I do believe that if it was predicated upon anti-Semitism, then we're not safe here. And I will say another thing. How can you blame some people for being anti-Semitic when they see that we're not yashar bein odom lachaveiro? We ourselves need to be yashar because Hashem said, or zanu ala tzaddik, but uli yishle leiv simcha. We want the simcha. We want the simcha that's going to come from the simcha l'artzecha, the sosom irecha, but tzimichas karen l'dovet avdecha, barichas ne'er l'ven yishai meshichecha. We want that simcha. How can we have that simcha if we're not going to be yishrei leiv? We need to be yishrei leiv. Don't break into song now all at once. I mean, it's a nice niggin, but let's get the idea better. We need the idea, the idea that we have to be yishrei leiv. Now, I want to connect the two ideas that I've spoken about tonight in terms of the way to understand the beginning of the Torah. Rashi's understanding is that the only reason it mentions the fact that Hashem created the world is to teach us that He created the world and He gave the land of Israel to the ones who chose to follow His path by recognizing God from Aram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And they were the Sifrei HaYashar. They were the people in the Yashar that connect all the Yashas, all the decency, all the goodness that was implanted in mankind. And Avram cared about everybody. Avram cared about every human being. He would never, ever have allowed even the most evil people of Sodom to be destroyed without advocating for them. Save them. Maybe there's someone who's righteous amongst them. Could you picture that scene? Rioters, destructors, immoral people, evil to their fellow men. And Avram is arguing with Hashem. Maybe there's 40, maybe there's 30, maybe there's 20, maybe there's 10. Save! for the sake of them. What? You, Hashem, the evil and the righteous are going to have the same punishment? It's impossible. Avram Avinu, Yashar, he dug wells. Yitzchak dug the same wells his father dug to care for all of humanity. Yaakov had a son, Yosef, that gave light to the world in the most terrible famine that threatened to destroy humanity. That's Sefer Hiyashar. And it goes further. Yosef was filled with forgiveness. You know, you could argue and say the brothers were really, really evil. They did a terrible thing to their brother. But at the end of Ayachi, look at Yosef. Am I in God's stead? Should I withhold forgiveness from you? You might have thought to do bad to me. Atem chashavtem alai says Yosef to them at the end of Bereshis in Parshas Vayechi. Atem chashavtem alai ro'o. You thought to do bad to me. Elokim chashav alatova. But Hashem figured out that this is the best thing in the world. Lachayos bochem. Lachayos bochem amrov. In order to make you a great nation. Every step of the way was Yashar. So now, the Hamak Dover is telling us that the base of English was destroyed because there was lack of Yashar. Because we were not Rashi says the purpose of the first Pasuk, Horatius Baralukim, is to teach us that Hashem gave Eretz Israel to the Jewish people. Rabosai, these two ideas are one idea. We want the base of English rebuilt. We want Eretz Israel to be sovereign without anyone else being Lord over the Jewish people. We want Mashiach to come. We will have it. 
It will be given to us because Hashem promised it in Bereshit Baralakim. But He promised it to us in the Sefer HaYashar. And if we will be Sefer HaYashar, if we will be the kinds of people who are filled with Yashras, that's the situation that's going to bring about that not only will the Jewish people be free, the world will be free. The world will know honesty, decency. They will see the rule of Hashem because the most important piece of information is Hashem created the world. It's not a free for all. It's an opportunity to be in God's image, to be kind, merciful, gracious, under pressure. Every one of us is under a tremendous amount of pressure in these last few months. It's just not normal. We're all on edge. We're all very, very uptight. We can't do those things we always wanted to do. But there are many things we can do now that we never were able to get to. And one of them is to work on the concept of or Zorua, any light we plant, it's Latzadik. And Uliyishre lay to those who are straight of heart and follow not only the Benodom Lamokom, but the Benodom Lachavero, Simcha, the greatest joy of all. The Simcha la'atzecha, la'arichas ner, l'ven yishai meshichecha, bim heira v'yameinu, amen. So in Yitz Hashem, next week, if we're still under this terrible decree, hopefully not, perhaps we will have another shear. But otherwise, we will join together on Shabbos. Now, I would like to echo, even though it's going to be posted on our website, some of the very great rabbis of our neighborhood and the Flatbush neighborhood have asked the Jewish people, of course, to do the right thing, but another additional thing, get tested. Because if you're tested for COVID and all of us are negative, that will drive the numbers way, way down. And that will cause the opening of our shuls once again. Think about it. If you haven't been tested yet, and even if you were, go get tested again. It's good for you, it's good for your neighbor, and it's good for Hashem, because that's what he wants. And those are the three midos that we need. We're gonna be benching Rosh Chodesh Mar Cheshven. I have a student, a wonderful young man who we daven for in our shul regularly, Menachem Mordechai Ben Ophira, a young 30-something young man who is a prisoner of a brain aneurysm. But to this day, he is very upbeat. And he says all the time, Rebbe, you know when Mashiach is coming? He says to me, Look, I speak to him, come out every day, sometimes a few times a day. And I love it. But you know what he says to me? He says, Rebbe, you know when Mashiach is coming? He's coming in Mar Cheshvan. Because Mar Cheshvan means bitterness. And Hashem is going to turn all the bitterness into nothing but beauty, into nothing but simcha. So I predict, he said, that it's coming in Marcheshvan. Wow, what a great thought to be Mevorcha Marchodesh at home. Those who can't come to shul because we're above the number, and unfortunately, you know, none of the Eishas Chayel, some of the great women at Rav Shul can come. But nevertheless, they're davening at home. They can't come because of the restrictions, not because we don't want them to come. It's because of the restrictions. And Hashem wants us to daven at home. And when you bench Rosh Chodesh at home, it's just as valuable because that's what Hashem wants. And that's going to bring about Simcha for Klai Yisrael. Let's hope and pray that everyone has a wonderful Shabbos. I wish you all a wonderful, good Shabbos. Enjoy the Shabbos, despite the setbacks, despite, despite the difficulties. And not only enjoy the Shabbos, but let's all bench for a real chodesh of chayim shel shalom tovu racha, all the other things that we say so often. Chayim shiyumol mishalos libeinu litova, amen.
seller. I, if, I'll, I'll give five minutes for any questions or comments anybody would like to make. I'll, be. I'll, un, I'll unmute uh, everybody so you can, you can, you know, talk. Yes. Okay, Rabbi, I got one question. Okay. First of all, Ashkayach was beautiful. Thank you. And second of all, uh, the Rebbe said that the uh, Rabbanim said that uh, everybody should try to get tested. The Rebbe knows that there's a lot, a lot of false positives. A lot. Well, okay, so and if there's going to be a hundred false positive out of the thousand, that's going to put the numbers up. Okay, so so I really don't understand why they would, if somebody feels he doesn't have no symptoms, he's gazint, he doesn't have fever, he doesn't have anything wrong with him, why should they get tested and Khulila come back a false positive where it'll just close the country down even longer? Okay, I'd like, I, I'm just asking. I'd like to answer that. I'd like to answer that because I myself went tonight, actually right after Shul, to my physician, not to a rapid test center, right. but to a physician for a blood test, not for a nose swab, but for a okay. blood test. And he told me, these blood tests are almost 100% correct. The nose swabs and other rapid tests are not as correct. But even those, Rebella, please listen, because we have statistics on this, even those are not 10% wrong. They're very, very small percentage. They're 95% correct. On what? But on even the nose swabs. There are only five out of 100 that don't report properly and do give false positives. But the overwhelming majority of the blood tests don't give false positives. The blood test is only for the antibody. The no, it's, for, it's not... for both. It's for both. It's both. There's the blood tests that is being administered so by I... doctors are both. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not for the, uh, not for the according centric. to a doctor that I, that I spoke to, Dr. Fuchs and another doctor, the blood test is mainly for, uh, how do you call it, antibody. Okay, so this, is, this is something that I can't answer because I'm not a medical professional, and we'll leave it. I'm, le I'm, I'm quoting my physician, who is, uh, I consider good, thank God. And you see my wife. It be good because I don't want to get in trouble here. But, but <laughs> Rebbe, my wife, Suzanne Gesundheitstag, went before the first surgery. She, they did two tests, both of them positive, which was a false positive because when I took her to another doctor who did a 12 hour, a 24 hour test, it came back negative. So on, on one person, she tested twice positive and it was a false positive two times on one person. And a battle. I, I don't think we can argue this because this is only anecdotal. We are going by the medical profession's okay. uh, statistics, which overwhelmingly claim that the tests are extremely accurate. We can only go by their estimation. I can't argue this. I'm just, well, I'm just telling you what. Uh, well, the I think we should get off that particular topic because that's not related okay. to the Parsha. Okay. Uh, questions on the Parsha. Anyone? Uh, sorry, you have you want the floor? No? Okay. Okay. Rabbi Snow. Yes. It's Heshi. Heshi, welcome. I'm listening here with Mordechai. And oh, I mentioned you just I mentioned Mordechai Gottlieb just a few moments ago. And he, and he heard it. We're listening to the whole thing. Oh and wow. Mordechai... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to embarrass you, Mordechai. <laughs> Mordechai had Sadik. Uh, I want you to all meet. Mordechai, uh, Menachem Mordechai Ben Ophira, who we daven for in our shul always. He's on, he's on this uh, call. Right. 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 
It's under Heshi Gottlieb, who's his father. And I'm here, here, we're here, we're both here. What? We're both here, we're listening. We're both listening, okay. Menachem Mordechai, it's a pleasure to have you here. It's, it's a pleasure. Always. Thank you, Rabbi. And you gave tremendous chizik to us tonight. So yes. I thank you for that. good to me. Hashem is good to me. I'm so happy. He is good to you. He is. Baruch Hashem. You just made a beautiful Kiddush Hashem. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Hashem is so good to me. So anyway, now the whole world knows your opinion of when Mashiach is coming. I hope so. Okay. Now, both I want to wish you all a wonderful good Shabbos. Thank you. We should get together at many, many smachot. Amen. Oh, Thank Amen. you, Rabbi. Good night. 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 Good